welcome to Wonder Women, an inspirational talk show which champions the stories of trailblazing women who work in the tech, media and music industries. I'm Rhea Hebden and each week I'll be speaking to three fabulous women who work in the same industry but in different roles to find out the highs and the lows and what it really takes to be a success. On today's show, we're discussing what it's like to work in the TV industry, and I'm delighted to introduce TV line producer and production manager Judwin Stanley, multi camera director Abigail Danqua, and executive producer and lecturer Lindsay Duffy. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good. Good. <laughs> TV, as you know, is one of the most exciting yet competitive industries to work in. How did you get your first break, and what do you think are the best routes in for young people? Jude? It was a really long time ago, so we're talking like 20 years since I started in TV. Um, a long time before the internet, so uh, I had to write a lot of letters, lots of handwritten things. Sometimes if I was lucky, I did them on a word processor. <laughs> um, so sent them out and it was a, a, uh, just a lot of being in the right place at the right time, really. Um, it's quite different now. <laughs> There's much more competitiveness. So although it's easier to get in uh, by using uh, the internet and there's many more digital forms of information out there as well about how you can do it and what's available uh, in terms of what the roles are and how they might suit your talents, um, it's also much, much harder. It, because it's become a bit more accessible, it means that there are many more people trying to get in as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really competitive. Okay, great. Abigail, what about you? Um, well, I don't have the conventional route in um, to television or the kind of production side of it. I used to work in fashion and then worked in broadcast management. So I worked for a dig digital, I can't speak, digital channel. Um, and then I went back to film school as a mature student and did a master's. Um, and then I graduated in 2012. And since then, I've been doing floor managing, um, assistant directing, stage management, and working towards becoming um, a multi-camera director. So I've done gallery directing. And this year, hopefully, we'll do some studio directing. Fabulous. And what about you, Lindsay? So I started 20-something um, years ago as well. Um, and I sort of literally hand-wrote lots and lots of letters on teddy bear paper, <laughs> notelet paper, really embarrassing things, not very sophisticated. Um, and got work experience at ITV and literally stayed there for 10 years and worked my way up through the ranks. So I was just not going to let that opportunity go. I think today, I think it's all about tenacity. I think it was then as well. But it's sort of having that work ethic and not giving up at all and you know just if you get one rejection doesn't matter go again keep keep trying yeah. because mm -hmm. it, it will eventually work out it's timing sometimes mm -hmm. so some really interesting points there and, and interesting in the way that you've all entered in different ways and different avenues okay cool now we've been out and about to speak to various youth charities to find out what they're interested to know about working in the industry here's what they have to say in the senior levels of the industry positions tend to be held by the oxbridge white male do you see this changing or not? If so, how? So that was Francesca from the Media Trust. Jude, would you like to answer that question? Sure. So um, I think the industry is recognising the point that she's making. Um, and there is definitely investment in schemes at a more senior level, um, certainly to um, provide more diversity and be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, schemes that are being um, delivered between the BBC Academy and Creative Skillset in particular for assistant commissioner, um, for series producer. Uh, and I know that some of the indies as well have their own series producer training as well because they want to retain and be more inclusive about their workforce as well. Um, so I think those things are there. They're being put in place finally, because how long have we been talking mm. about <laughs> this yes. issue? Yes. Very yeah. little has changed when yeah. you look at the statistics. Yeah. And it's something we've talked about for years and years, years decades. And, years. And, it, and it's... It's, it's slowly, it's working there, but it feels like it's still a bit slow. Yeah. So it feels like even though we've got these schemes, it need, there needs to be more commitment, perhaps from the more senior levels, perhaps at broadcasters, yeah. within the channels, that is actually actively taking the people that are doing this training and actively want to be part of that level of management yeah. um, to actually invest in them and actually bring them on board. So I think perhaps there needs to be more commitment maybe to... Yeah. To, to outcomes. Yeah. I think also it's, it's about having, as you say, to have the outcome, but make sure there's a pipeline. Because yeah. it's very well and good mm. having the initial scheme yeah. to get people mm. to be interested in the industry or know that those kind of roles are available to them. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. But you've got to then give them somewhere to go. Yeah. There's no point training yeah. them and there's nowhere, there's nowhere to and go. There's, there's exactly. no commitment. Yeah, yeah. that's it, essentially. That's what comes down to yeah. And I think we all have a duty as well to be mentors to new people coming through and Absolutely. particularly mid-career 
um, professionals that are in that sort of yeah. limbo trying to get into the exactly. boardroom or trying to be a controller we need to be really you know helping and, making um, sure and, that's particu and also particularly for women as well yeah. Yeah. because there's still there still seems to be a bit of a barrier between uh, the, with the with the demands of what the industry is um, trying to balance a work life and a home life mm. as well and actually we're missing a huge <laughs> range of talent in yeah. women yeah. at particular age a particular well, age group. The creative yeah. skill set report which showed at the age of 35 there's something like 7,000 women yeah. will leave the industry mm. as opposed to 500 men sure. and it's so, a key point yeah. 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 It's when you have so, a family. So, so some of those more senior uh, schemes that I was thinking about are designed to help bring women returners back right. to work so that we retain that talent that the industry has invested mm. in some time previously um, and that hopefully we would be able to support them in yeah. those roles at a more senior level. Fantastic, really, really valuable. Okay, let's play another VT. The media industry has often been criticised for being ageist towards women. Do you worry about the longevity of your career? So that was Afia from the Media Trust. Abigail, would you like to answer that one? Ooh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you know, uh, that, I think that's the thing with... Uh, Women and age is such a delicate mm. issue. Um, I kind of um, think that you just need to get on with it and not worry about what everybody else thinks. And I think if it, it depends because some people know from the outset what they want to do. So some people know, or some women know particularly, know that they want to be mothers, they want to do it young, and that's their part off, which is great. And some people know they don't want to do that route because their life, they want to see it in a different direction, take it in a different direction. So they're all about the career. I think you just have to know yourself because the world is very, e it's so easy for the world to tell us what we should look like, what we should think, what we should do. And it's too easy to fall into those traps of what the society thinks you should do. If you decide that you want to, you know, go to university, do a degree, do a master's, you know, work your way up the career ladder, fine, good, go for it. If you decide you want to come out of college, have a baby, be with your kids for 10 years or however long you feel comfortable with them before you return to work, do it. I think you've just got to do whatever you want to do. Do you think, though, it's different for on-screen and off-screen? Because we're talking about ages and particularly for women. Yeah, There's I think... There's been some really big cases. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I and think you see the men, not news readers, male yes. news readers, they're sort of white-hair-looking, distinguished and authoritative. And you don't necessarily see the same look on a, a female you don't see anybody over 45, so no. no. female. Do we think that... News? I don't know if that will change. Well, I think the thing what has... To, I think what we have to do as audience members is request this of the broadcasters. Because they're not going to do anything unless no. we decide to, to, to tell them that we're okay with it. Because yeah. they all think that we think everyone has to be this kind of young, new bar, pretty person, which I'm sure that's great for some things, but there are other things. We want that authority from people who've had a bit you more want life experience. experience. You yeah. want wisdom you know from people. I mean? you wanna, you wanna see, and also, you want to see someone that's a role model for you Absolutely. at your age. Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. I don't really want to be told by like a 21 year old what I should be doing Thank in my you. career, yeah. quite frankly, because yeah. I think I'll probably know better than you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I just think it's, it's a case of you, be, be true to who you are and what you want. And yet yeah, we all do fall for what the rest of the world says, but you've just got to keep going. And I do, it's the same thing with the diversity thing. I always think that if you see a broadcaster doing something right, let them know, tell them. And if you see a broadcaster doing something wrong, let them know, tell them. And enough, if enough of us women of a certain age or whatever you want to say, request that of our broadcasters, then hopefully you would think that they would start changing. But it's not going to change if we just let them do whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you need presenters to reflect the diversity of the viewers. Exactly. OK, cool. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to another VT. What are you most excited about for the future of women in the media? So that was Hannah from the Media Trust. Lindsay, would you like to answer that one? Yeah, sure. Um, I think, you know, we're in an age where we have a female prime minister. We've got more females we're seeing coming through um, as experts on TV shows. BBC have obviously been running their um, female expert schemes as well. So I think there's a good, good time for women to sort of change and to be seen and to make sure their voices are heard a lot more. Um, women in Film and Television is a great organisation actually that works with um, mentoring women, particularly um, mid-career returners, so those who've gone off to perhaps to have a family, to get them back into the industry because you're, you're losing out on a whole wealth of experience. Mm. I know for me, when I, be, when I became a parent, I think I became a better filmmaker because I actually had some life experience mm. as opposed to when I was 23 and 
you know, just sort of rattling on doing my thing. So I think, you know, that sort of age and experience can be really, really useful. And we don't want to lose females at, at that key point as well. So, um, you know, again, still with the technical grades and um, directors, we're still at a very, very low number, something like 12% of, of um, But there are more and more of those kind of technical organisations coming through. There's Real Angels as well, yeah, um, yeah, which is an agency that's kind of, you know, female... Um, uh, female crew, isn't it? Camera yeah. ops and sound recorders and all that kind of thing that's it kind of binding them all together. So there's, there are more things that I think the individuals yes. are actually making organisations themselves to support yeah. each other, yeah. mm -hmm. which is something that is really relatively new, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's another good one, Raising Films, which is looking at childcare yeah. for those oh, in the industry okay. and CTBF yeah. are supporting that and I think maybe the BFI as well That's fantastic. so yeah so there's some really good energy I think and people yeah. aren't just sitting back and going oh well it's a bit it's too difficult to me. we're not going to yeah. do it we'll find something else so I think that's that's really positive. Thank you. That was some fantastic feedback. I feel overwhelmed by that. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. <laughs> now remember, if you're just starting out or perhaps you're reconsidering your chosen career path, there's something in this for everyone. So make sure you follow us on all our social media, including wonderwomentv.com. While you're there, make sure you check out our friends Slenky because they offer really cool work experience opportunities in many of the industries that we're talking about today. Now, ladies. Now it's time for what I like to call 50 seconds of fun. This is a quick fire round of everyday dilemmas that could well happen to anybody wanting to work in the TV industry. I've got some little uh, bats here that I want you to hold, one each oh on God, one side. These. Thank you. It sorry, says, sorry, yes, sorry. you go girl, on the other, no, don't do it. <laughs> I always no, go. I always oh do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love these, over it. I think I need this in my life as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now the trick is, to not overthink your answers. We want you okay. to answer simultaneously yes or no, okay? okay. In 50 seconds. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Ready to go? go yeah. It. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> You've been booked to work on a really big production, but there's a few tricky characters in the team that make every day that little bit harder than it needs to be. Do you put up with it or do you throw the towel in? Okay. You've secured a couple of short-term contracts in TV, but the inconsistency is causing you to get into debt. Do you stick at it for another six months, or do you give up? Mm. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Would you travel 200 miles for production work experience on a popular TV yeah. format for free? Oh, hello. For free? Hello. For free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should you keep chasing your dream in telly despite pressure from your parents to get a real nine to five job? Ooh. Ooh. Can we answer? Yeah. Ah, nice. That was really interesting because on the question, would you travel 200 miles for production work experience on a popular TV format for free? Both Jude and Abigail said, no, don't do it. But Lindsay, you said, yes, you go, girl. Yeah. Why was that? <laughs> no, hold on. It depends. It completely depends. You didn't say for how long. Okay. It could have just been for a day. It could have been, you know, lots of different coulda, wouldas and shillas and so forth. I mean, you shouldn't be working for free for mm. lengths and lengths of time. And I would hope that, particularly if it's a popular, well-funded well anyway, thing, but it should so. be. You should, I know, I know. But I just think sometimes you've got to take an opportunity and... You know, it's sort of, it just sort of, it just sort of, you know, it just depends. Sometimes if you put yourself out there, things happen. If it's, it, it, yeah, true. And if it's genuine work shadowing, mm, there yeah. is there is a case to be able to say, yeah, absolutely. If it was offered to you, you don't know what it could lead to, yeah. those kinds of things. But I think if someone's actually getting value out of you being there, yeah. then you need to be careful, then <laughs> you need to be careful about all that stuff. But that's different and anyway. And it's 200 miles, 200 miles. miles. That's miles. expensive. That's, that's, not a, that's, not a, that's not a bus ride to Streatham. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> quite a journey you yeah. want to be paying out. And what, if, but what if you're if they, trying and trying and you lock it, you know? Um, but if you if you close doors, I, I completely get that. But mm. I think if you can't eat, if you if they aren't willing enough to just pay you or travel there, if they're a, they're a big, it sounded like they were a big production company. Mm. I think the very least they could do is to pay your travel because I think that that makes it a very close shop. So if I can't afford yeah. to mm. go there, oh no, I lose out. No, it's a definite I mean? barrier. Yeah. And if you think about it, you know, it's London, it's Manchester, really, yeah. are, the, are the two main hubs, yeah. particularly yeah. for television. Mm. So it is difficult because you used to have more regional centres. You know, mm. I worked yeah. in Norwich, for example. There's nothing there anymore. That was a massive ITV yeah. centre at one it's point. It's much harder. So it is much harder. I think, 
I don't. I mean, that was a you know. It's it's difficult. You I need more it. details. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think you've got to be. I think the message is you need to be careful. I know, yeah, you, know you should yeah, never yeah. be taking on, uh, and you certainly shouldn't be getting yourself into debt and, and no, taking no. on too many things. But sometimes, if there is a barrier, it's like, well, find you know, find a way yeah, over it. Depends, it, find a way around it depends it. what the barrier is. And actually, yeah. that's I think that's part of what makes you great when you work in TV. Mm. It's just generally because how many times do we turn something round from literally yeah. nothing mm. very very Absolutely. quickly it's a really dynamic industry so something changes all the time mm. yeah. so actually one of the best skills that you can have as a person that's working within television mm. and actual program making is having those quick solutions and being able to find mm. a different way round to still get to the same end mm. point and yeah. that starts with with looking for work yeah, yeah. exactly mm. I, I think for me the reason i said go for it was sitting on a sofa at home nothing's going to happen this is got true. to get yourself you can go yeah, out you do you uh, and look, you know look at us here all the oh. trouble we've now got ourselves <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to get out there and you, you never know to, who you're yeah. going to meet and the connections yeah. that yeah. you make so but but absolutely you know if it you're going to do it have a plan about what you're getting out of it yeah, yeah. so secure something out of it so it might be that you might get a credit out of it or you might get a mentor out of it something that is useful for you if you're not going to get paid yeah. you have to get something even a follow-up meeting home. with a yeah. talent manager you or something, something out of you've it. got to get something yeah fantastic feedback okay See, i was right <laughs> <laughs> we agree to disagree okay it feels like a good time to ask what your final thoughts are for people considering a career in television jude i think there's loads of resources out there that tell you what it's like to work in this industry and I think it's your responsibility, um, if you want a career in this industry, to find out all the things that you need to know. So things like, it's not a nine to five, it isn't 52 weeks a year, um, the majority of it's gonna be freelance and that has its own added responsibilities to it. So actually, it's very different from working in any other industry and you really need to know your know what this industry is about before you decide to try and get into it. Perhaps you end up pursuing a career that's not really right for you, that doesn't really match your skills. You need to be really, really sure this is where you want to be because actually, kind of when you get sucked in, mm. you kind of can't really get out again. <laughs> um, but the, the great thing about it is no two days are the same. Um, you get to meet amazing people, like lovely ladies here today. Um, you get amazingly privileged experiences as well as part of your job. And it's an incredible industry to work in. Really good. Abigail? Yeah. I think a lot of what Judith said is absolutely correct. I think for me, um, from someone who was uh, an employee for quite a long time and then going to become freelance, that change is quite a big one. Mm. I think you have to know yourself and know how you work within the industry because the industry is predominantly freelance and so for me I always see the job as like three prongs one is getting the job then it's actually doing the job and then it's getting the money from that job and chasing that up <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it, your yeah, job yeah, is yeah. three it's you, you're doing the job of three people really um, I think my for me in, in terms of my career what's been really important is having a mentor that's helped me so my two jobs that I've got over the last two years <laughs> have come because a mentor has been out meeting someone and has suggested me for something and I've gone in and had a meeting with them and got the job. Okay, and Lindsay? Well, I think, you know, the industry's full of passionate people. If you're not passionate about the industry, don't bother. Mm -hmm. You've got to show that passion and enthusiasm. It's such a privilege to work in film and television. And, you know, if you, people will see through you if you're not genuine at all. So you have to have that and show that. And it's so rewarding. You know, where else can you be where I've suddenly one week I'm working on a death row documentary, interviewing a serial killer. The next I'm in a famous chef's house organising tablecloths and something chicken eat to cook. <laughs> so I love that range and I think that's absolutely amazing. So, um, so my advice is a lot of what you... What you guys, girls for saying, um, is about building your network, you know, making sure you're getting out there, making sure your social media is appropriate mm. as well. But, you know, like you're yeah. saying, talking about what it is that you want to do. And there's no excuse now not to always be making a film or, you know, doing something. If you're waiting Creating in between content, jobs, yeah. yeah, create some content, do something to show that you're proactive. So you've got yeah. something else to talk about. You know, we always say to our students, you know, you need to build up your CVs and show that you've done work experience or show that you've made a short film or done something yeah. else to give you a, another another little edge so mm. um, my advice is go for it it's so passionate and fabulous and yes go for it <laughs> yes. um, yeah. go but listen to these sensible ones about, <laughs> <laughs> about your money and sorting all that thing out too. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much. Some really, really inspiring comments and valuable takeaways. Thank you so much, ladies. We've sadly run out of time. Thank you for watching. Next week, we'll be discussing what it's like to work in the music industry. So make sure you follow us at wonderwomentv.com. Mm -hmm.